home floor, and they have done just that. The most recent victory over the 18th ranked Wisconsin Badgers. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Inside Michigan Basketball. The head coach joins us, and the Badgers, a team that comes in so disciplined, so methodical, and yet you guys, especially on the defensive side of the ball, outplayed them from start to finish. Must have felt great. Well, I, I'm happy you feel that way. I mean, I, I, it's really great to beat them because we have had troubles with them. They're so they don't beat themselves. Uh, it's a great model for us. Our kids understand why they're in the NCAA tournament every year. So give Wisconsin a lot of credit, but I was really happy the way we played as well. How good did it feel because you had never beaten the Badgers? Zach Novak, Stu Douglas, your co-captains, had never beaten them. It was the first time since January of 06 since Michigan had the upper hand. Well, it, it, I just, like you said, it's a compliment to them uh, that I feel good about it. But it, in the long run, it's just, it, it is just another win mm -hmm. that we're glad we can get it. But it is a great win. From the standpoint, they're all great, yeah. and but Wisconsin, I have so much admiration for their program. Uh, it is one that for today, right now, before we move on to Northwestern, it was a good one. And we'll talk about the Wildcats a little bit later on. This is how consistent the Badgers have been in Bo Ryan's 11 years in Madison. Just four times now, just four. They've lost three games in a row. Michigan gets the job done, and you do it in a number of different ways. We talked about the defensive side of things, the hustle, the intangibles with Zach Novak, Tim Hardaway, and guys, Stu Douglas, scrapping and clawing on the floor. They, they, we played really hard. You have to. You're not going to beat Wisconsin if you do not. We really played hard. We, uh, we had a lot of floor burns out there today. So we got guys, it, it, guys getting on the floor that have never gotten on the floor, and at least we got some other guys thinking about it. But there's no thinking with Novak. He's there first, but <laughs> Douglas is there now. And, and Trey Burke is getting there. That's really big when your backcourt is playing like that. Yeah, it was interesting because during halftime, I went over and I talked with Rich Maloney, the baseball coach here at Michigan, and he talked about how much he admires Zach Novak. When you have another coach on your campus in another sport admiring the way your athlete plays, that tells you something about the it's really It's really when, when we have Rich do that or whatever. And then uh, the great story today was Cassie Russell telling the whole team, I, if I was in a foxhole, I want Zach Novak in my foxhole. I mean, that's an incredible compliment from an incredible man of high character. And for him to say that, he really means that. So that's the type of uh, model that you want with our program, Stu and Zach, guys like that, that really show the young guys, the Trey Burks, the Carlton Burns, Evan Smotras, Tim, this is how Michigan plays. Remember it, because I want you to do this when you're a junior and senior as well. Really was a special weekend, and we'll get to that, the dedication of this beautiful facility, the Player Development Center, coming up. But talk to me a little bit about Tim Hardaway, a double-double, his second of his career, first of the season. And even though it wasn't with 30 points and 10 rebounds or anything like that, it was a hard-working man's effort. He did a lot of things inside, and he was one of those emotional guys scrapping and clawing. Uh, he like really, that. you know, he was disappointed. Uh, with his performances in some of the games. He ha hasn't shot the ball like I know Tim can shoot the ball. Uh, at the same time, then what are you going to do? Or is it going to be you just can't hit a bad night? Find other ways to help the team. Today he did that with his rebounding. He was all over the place rebounding. For him to get double-figure rebounds, that's a good day. I mean, a really good day. And we've really emphasized it. Jordan Taylor might be the best point guard in this conference, perhaps in the country. In 57 career games, he'd only turned the ball over 57 times. Against Trey Burke, a freshman, and your defense, he turned it over three times. Says an awful lot about the development of Trey Burke. Well, Trey Burke and Stu Douglas, we had to, we traded them off a little bit, but both of those young men really uh, uh, embraced this challenge of playing such a tremendous player. Uh, I remember last year showing our guards this is what guards in the Big Ten really play like because his game was so efficient. And uh, for them to go out there and really try and meet the challenge the best they could, I'm really proud of our heart and, and, and how, how we played such a very good player. Stu Douglas matched a career high with five steals. Jordan Morgan came in, gave you another solid job on the boards. We'll get to the Indiana game and how good he was against the Hoosiers, but that's back-to-back -back games where he's played with a chip on his shoulder. Yeah, he is playing uh, above the rim right now in many areas, and uh, he has, wasn't doing that earlier in the year. He was just off a little bit with his timing, and his just his care level is at a, really at a high level for trying to help his teammates get extra rebounds. Uh, really working every day and improving his hands, all those things. Uh, I like the energy he's bringing to the team. So it's 11 straight wins for your club if you take it back to a game at the end of last season. And you told your team after the game, look, we've got four of our first five games in conference here in our barn. We've got to hold serve. you got to do it. And you know, say we have a nice little winning streak going here at home since Wisconsin beat us last time. But at the same time, it's paramount that you win. And as we found out in Indiana, how difficult it is to win on the road, 
it is paramount that you win at home. So we have a very uh, talented team, Northwestern, that has given us, we've been, they've either swept us or split with us yeah. the last, since, uh, except for the first year here, I think every year, uh, but one, they have swept us or split us. So we need to get this win at home because it's so t tough to win at Northwestern. Talk about the Wildcats when we come back and a recap of the first game of the week at Indiana. Michigan continues to play the top 25 teams night in and night out. It is a grind. When we come back, we'll hear about some of the guys who've come back, the great Michigan basketball players of their past, their thoughts on this beautiful facility and what they had to say to inspire John Beeline's basketball club. There's just uh, something a little extra there. We wanted a little bit of revenge to come back from the Indiana loss. And, you know, Coach Beeline, since he's been here, haven't beaten Wisconsin. We only get to play them once. So uh, there's a lot riding in this game, a lot of motivation, and it really showed. After what happened last year when we played against Wisconsin at home, after the um, incredible shot by Gosser, you know, that stuck with us throughout the whole entire year So and throughout the summer. So we just made an emphasis in this game, you know, just to try to beat them by more than three. You know, limit them to one shot opportunities, um, box them out because they're a very physical team, one of the most physical teams in the Big Ten. And, um, you know, just try to play with our hearts and uh, play with our mind and be smart out there. And I think we did a great job of that today. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by AT&T. When you can go faster, you are free to do more. AT&T, get it faster. Give it up for Phil Hubbard. Phil, come on. Just go out and give it your all, play hard. You know, I'm really proud of what you guys do when I watch you on TV. You guys really make me really proud to be a part of the Michigan. So keep up the good work and go out today and get a win for the Big Blue. Hi, uh, I didn't expect to be in front of a team. I thought my coaching days were <laughs> over. But I just want to thank Coach for this great weekend. Uh, and he made me really feel the tradition of what it means to be a Michigan guy. This man right here was the reason I came to Michigan. Uh, the way he handled himself on the floor, uh, he shook my hand when I was a high school player, and uh, I wanted to be just like him. And uh, his principles, all this stuff you see right here, that's what it is to be a Michigan man. He, he gave it to me. I tried to give it to guys be, uh, behind me. When you're out there, you're representing all of us. And uh, do the best you can, guys. Good luck. Pastor Kazi Russell. Guys, let me just say very quickly, let me echo what I said last night. <clears throat> Go out, keep playing together from what I've seen. The formula to winning on a consistent basis is keep relying and trusting on your teammates. Embrace what they bring to the table. But don't let anybody come in your house and play harder than you play and beat you. So keep playing hard. Keep playing together. If you got a guy that's hot, ride him. Coach tell you to box this guy out, box him out. Pay attention to the report. That's what it takes to win. Not one game here and lose three here. Get your string together. Run you some games together and keep playing together. Don't let anybody come between you and your teammates. Let's go blue. All right. Yeah. Blue. Keep sticking your nose in, man. If I was going in a fight, you'd be the first guy I'd take with me. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. One, two, three. Let's go. Let's go. Boy, it's fun to hear some of the great basketball Michigan legends come back and talk to those teams and inspire some of these kids. I don't know if they know who they are, but I know you do. Just tell me how good it felt to have guys like you know, the Russells and the Hubbards and the Tom Janovich is back. Well, let, let's take those three, for instance, because their jerseys are hanging. But, you know, Phil Phil called me. We went down to Virginia. He said, Coach, can I get a ticket? And I said, of course you're going to get a ticket. Right behind the bench, Michigan gear on. And uh, Rudy, Rudy and I have got to become good friends with Steve Fishman, uh, uh, Bill Fromm, and some of his teammates when he was at Michigan. And so we stayed connected. Rudy came down this summer and gave us a, uh, a coaching clinic. And then Cassie, every time that I've talked to Cassie, <laughs> I mean, he's so warm and inviting, and we're just now with our new player development center. We have a home for all former Michigan uh, basketball players and, and their women. I mean, it, it's very been very. We have Chrysler, and that's it. There hasn't been this really home where our offices are, the workout areas are. They could come play pickup. It's really been great. So we brought those three back today. Invited Glenn Rice. He couldn't make it, but we brought brought those guys back today, and just to say welcome back. 
from here on out, you're, you're home, and then we'll continue to do that in the years to come. And a nice ceremony Saturday night to really kickstart the weekend. Why is it important for you? Why do you think those guys need to feel part of what's going well, on? Well, right because now? they're a great part of tradition. I, I appreciate Michigan basketball, uh, but because of a, a decade or so where we were down a little bit and we were re rebuilding, a lot of the young people don't remember how good these teams were. And as a result, it's big for us. It's also big to also connect those former student athletes, those great players, with our donors. We have, we're so uh, fortunate to have so many uh, people that are so generous to our athletic department. And their generosity is appreciated by us all. And for our, our student athletes, for our former players, to see the tremendous financial support that we get from so many people that cares brings it all back together. So your home is now their home, but to start the week, you were not home. You were at Indiana's home, Bloomington, Indiana Assembly Hall, very difficult place to play against a very good club, ranked 12th in the country at the time. The Hoosiers are one of those teams that came up. They've had talent before, but now they've got it all together. They really they? put it together right now, and it's, it's a couple things. It's experience. They have a lot of, when, one thing about when, you, when you're taking over a situation like Tom Crean uh, did, you can tell people you're gonna play right away. Now you might get your butts kicked a little bit, but you are going to play. They have thousands of minutes logged with at some very key positions at the guards at the backcourt, and now they add Zeller, one really high talented post player. Tom's been working really hard. They they got out on us early. We had to play catch up for 40 minutes. Not the way I think you want to play them. They're very good at, at, at setting a very good tempo. They shot 55%. You guys shot better than 45%, but you were down by as many as 15. You tied it twice. Your team showed an awful lot of moxie in coming back. Yeah, yeah we did. did, Matt, but their 55% is a lot of, they run good offense, they get good players. We had some moments in that game where that, uh, just the environment there, distracted us enough and we forgot who we were guarding a little bit and gave them some really good shots, and they don't miss them. They're talented. Good teams don't miss it when you make a mistake. At the same time, all that being said, we never gave up. We hung in there. We were very tired, and who knows? You know, one call here, one thing here, or a shot at the buzzer goes in, anything could happen in that game. So we were really happy with our kids' effort. We do, do have to play smarter than we played in that game. We will. We're working on it every day. So the final there was 73-71 in favor of the Hoosiers. Then, as we talked about already, you beat Wisconsin. You score 59 there. Now you get Northwestern coming in on a Wednesday night. The Wildcats are a, another type curveball team oh, yeah. that will throw something different that's at you. A, I think that's where this league is right now. This league is so talented, and they have so many great coaches in the league that every game is a new challenge. You go from a 77-possession game with uh, playing the other night against Indiana now it's a 50 possession game playing against Wisconsin and then you play against Northwestern completely different style but another 50 possession game so it's really unique that you have to keep adjusting and adjusting as you go go through your season you got to have bright kids to do that I hope we're learning more every day we, we talked about the bounce back factor your team's ability to come back from losses you did it after losing to Virginia earlier this year you did it after losing to Duke earlier this year and now you've done it against Indiana handling success is a little different than handling failures at times we talk about it all the time I know it's crazy and probably um, as my experience tells us it's a lot easier to get better from a loss than it is a win it, it drives it home that Indiana game I don't know if we win this game today if if Novak shot comes in from half court and we make it Maybe we have a, a fool's goal idea of who we are. We need to be a tough-minded, hard-nosed, really bright team to win at this level. Uh, we did today. We got to do it against Northwestern. We got to do it against Iowa, Michigan State. All sitting here waiting to play us. Yeah, big games against the Wildcats and Hawkeyes every week is big, especially in the Big Ten. Good luck, Coach. Thanks for your time. Thanks, man. Stay with us when we come back. More thoughts from past Michigan basketball players on the beautiful player development center, the pride that they feel not only in this facility, but the way the team is playing. And later on, a unique and inside look at Michigan's Sugar Bowl win down in New Orleans on January 3rd. You don't want to miss it. Against the Penn State Nittany Lions, the next time they're at Chrysler Center will be Sunday for a noon tip-off against the Minnesota Golden Gophers. We're here in the beautiful Player Development Center, and right here, Saturday night, more than 90 former players came back to check out this fabulous facility, and boy, are they impressed. 
it surpassed my expectations because, you know, we've been talking about it for a long time since uh, I think we came in as freshmen. They told us it was going to be ready when we were juniors, but it never ended up happening. But when I never expected it to be like this, though. This is, like I said, this is first class. It just never crossed my mind, really, that the university would take basketball seriously enough to, to do something like this. And for all of us to see this kind of stuff, it's, it's just amazing. It really is, uh, shows a commitment, and you can see by the players he's getting for next year, and I think going forward, it's going to make a tremendous difference. Stay right there. When we come back, we'll shift gears to football. Everybody down in New Orleans was impressed with the Michigan contingent and the Michigan defense. We'll show you why next. Hello, Todd. Just calling to let you know I'm giving you the silent treatment. So you're calling to tell me you're giving me the silent treatment? Um, yeah. Jen, this is like the eighth time you've no, called. No, it's fine. My family has free unlimited mobile to any mobile minutes from AT&T, so I can call all I want. I don't think you understand how the silent treatment works. Hello? Buy unlimited messaging and get free unlimited calling to any U.S. mobile on any network. AT&T. Go green or go blue, it's up to you. Head into your nearest Arby's to grab a medium combo and get your choice of a Michigan or Michigan State Souvenir Rivalry Cup. Go to Arby's now to support your favorite school. Go green or go blue, it's up to you. Arby's, it's good mood food. If you missed the Dan Patrick Show, you've missed High Profile Athlete. The 78th Sugar Bowl between Michigan and Virginia Tech was anything but a classic. A number of unusual plays made the difference in the game for the Wolverines, like Jareth Glanda's reception on a fake field goal attempt late in the first half. Glanda is Michigan's long snapper. The play led to a successful field goal attempt, giving the Wolverines a 10-6 halftime lead. I got a couple blocks, two or three down, yards downfield, and then I saw the ball go over my head and it got deflected. And I got up and grabbed it and then the next thing I knew Big Will was on top of me trying to celebrate with me but I didn't even know what had happened yet. How painful was that? Oh, it wasn't that painful. I think I just got tripped up. I probably tripped myself over the yard line or something like that but it was a great play and I was, and I was happy I could help my team get a new set of downs like that. Early in the third quarter, freshman Frank Clark made one of the game's biggest plays. This interception led to a Michigan touchdown. Well, thanks to my coaches, my position coach, Coach Greg Madison, you know, and, and having faith in me and playing this big game, you know, I came through and made a play for my team. Brandon Gibbons ended up the hero, nailing a 37-yard field goal in overtime. The sophomore was perfect on the night. Coach Hope put faith in me and always does it in practice. I just want to prove the team I can make it. Senior Junior Hemingway was named the game's most valuable player. He caught just two balls, but both for touchdowns. I know I had 60 minutes, 60 minutes of football left to play at the University of Michigan. And to go out there and just give them my all, you know, give the team the best chance. We figured out which one we wanted. We got it. Being through all the things we've been through, all the, all the tough times, and, and being able to end, you know, with the fifth team that ever in Michigan history to win 11 games in a season, that means a lot. All right, Doug, thanks. That'll do it for this week's edition of Inside Michigan Basketball. We invite you back next week when we wrap up the games for the Wolverines against Northwestern at home on the road at Iowa and preview the big showdown, interstate battle, Michigan, Michigan State. It takes place Tuesday night at the Chrysler Center. Until then, I'm Matt Shepard. So long and go blue. Inside Michigan Basketball and by State Farm for auto, home, life, and banking. Get to a better state.
two seniors who's likely to see significant action tonight for Michigan.